is up ladies and gentlemen, CJ the Cheese DJ here and we're back with another news video for you guys today and guys we're back over on the Xbox Arc Genesis Season Pass page because they have released some juicy information about Genesis Part 2. Now as you can see here this is for the Season Pass, we've got the full description here of the both Genesis Part 1 and Genesis Part 2 and as you can see it gives you a brief overview of obviously what they're about. However some interesting news has arisen from Genesis Part 2's description. So guys, you can see here in Genesis Part 2, you'll emerge into a vast new world teeming with strange biomes and exotic creatures, while engaging in extensive story-orientated missions that test your metal, ingenuity, and survival skills. So, straight off the bat, we know that they are bringing back missions from Genesis Part 1. Whether or not they will be as abundant as they were in Genesis Part 1, we don't know yet, but they are implementing story missions in some sort of way, which... I'm kind of kind of thrown off by it. I, I don't think the, the mission aspect of Genesis Part 1 was really that great. So I'm hoping that they've refined them and that they've made it into something a little bit more tasteful, I guess you could say. Because, uh, yeah, they, they weren't that great in Genesis Part 1. However, we do also have some new biome information of where we'll be going. So you can see here, you'll enjoy from idyllic fields through twilight phanto phantasmagoric realms. That's uh, That sounds like a noodle flavor. So your journey through idyllic fields, uh, they're the fields that we see through the Strider trailer and all that sort of stuff. So we already knew that that was going to be in the game. The Twilight Phantasm Magor... I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. The Migoran flavor. Uh, that sounds like it's going to be the area where we will tame the Shadow Mains up. Uh, because as we go further along, you can see here all the way into a hellish heart of darkness. So obviously that's going to be Rockwell's biome, and uh, it doesn't sound very positive to be honest. Sounds like it's going to be a, a little bit of a nightmare. Now another really cool thing that I've noticed here as well is that you can see here thousands of years and trillions of miles away from where your story began. Thousands of years. So it's been thousands of years in game to where we first started on the island, which is pretty incredible. So it does look like they're going for a uh, story timeline here, uh, and trillions of miles away from you where your story began. So it's pretty interesting that they're starting to include all this story-based stuff. I guess they are trying to set it up for uh, Arc 2, based off the fact they've got such big-time names uh, voicing some of the villains, and they've got Vin Diesel coming in on board for Arc 2. So I assume they're trying to make a more concrete sort of storyline to go along with Arc 2 for when that drops eventually. Now, another cool thing that I've noticed as well is, uh, so obviously completing missions earns you new map-wide bonuses and hexagons. So map-wide bonuses. Now... I have no idea what these map-wide bonuses could be. I'm, I'm assuming it might be you might be able to deal extra melee damage in certain biomes. You might be able to do... You might have extra movement speed in certain biomes. Because this uh, this sort of goes over Genesis Part 1's aspect as well of the missions. So you can see here earns you new map-wide bonuses and hexagons. Which you can spend for extra resources. We were able to do that in Genesis Part 1. But the cool thing here is additional engram points tech items, and travel between environments. Now, I don't know if you'll need to use uh, hexagons to travel between the environments, but tech items and engram points weren't necessarily a part of Genesis Part 1. The tech items, yes, you could get from the loot crates, but this makes it seem like that you could buy out the tech items just straight away. You won't need to wait for them or anything. The engram points as well is super interesting, so if you ran out of engram points, you had no way of earning more. You'd have to mind wipe and respec all your points into something else. So the fact that you can now buy engram points as well is going to make it a little bit easier for those that are playing solo and stuff like that. It's going to make it a lot easier. Now we also have information about the new biomes. Well, that we've got information confirming the new biomes in Genesis Part 2. So in Genesis Part 2, you'll emerge from the simulation into a gargantuan starship filled with unique biomes, including beautiful Elysian fields. So we know what that is. That's the, uh, the Eden fields. An exotic twilight realm of whole, highly evolved life forms, which is where I believe we'll be able to find the Shadow Main and stuff like that. It's like It looks like the, uh, the Aberration Zone in the trailer. Uh, the depths of outer space, which means we're probably going to be leaving the ship. There'll probably be like a, a hole in the hull or something that'll enable us to go outside, and that's where we'll find the Void Worm and the Astrodelphus. I'm going to be saying that the Void Worm is going to be a hostile team out there, and that the Astrodelphus will be similar to the Astrocetus and just kind of cruise around space and doing its little dolphin things. Um, and even the innards of the ever-expanding Rockwell himself. So, this is this is this makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. So, even the innards of the ever-expanding Rockwell himself. So we are actually going inside of Rockwell. That's what that's what the innards mean. 
So Rockwell has essentially become a huge part of the ship and we're journeying inside of him. That's what I'm picking up from that statement. So it's kind of intense. Now you can see here, each biome presents unique hazards, but also opportunities to acquire new resources and creatures. This is where things get really cool, including the powerful new mutagen that enables you to further evolve your existing tames. Now, mutagen is generally something that you use to mutate tames. That, that's generally what mutagen means. So whether or not this will enable us to actually mutate our dinos a lot easier than having to breed them a thousand times trying to get that single mut mutation, mutagen technically might allow us to feed something to the, the parents and then the offspring will have a higher chance of getting a mutation. We might be able to just straight up feed the mutagen to the dino that we want to get a mutation on or a stat mutation. Um, and it could essentially change the color as well as their stats. Now, in hindsight, I'm really hoping that it's a little bit more complicated than that because I think that'll be really cool if we, we have something that could essentially mutate our dinos, giving them extra abilities or changing the way they look, like extra spines on something and they get like uh, damage reflection, for example, like the, the Stego, is it the Stego? No, sorry, the, the Kentrosaurus, for example, you know, we'd be able to mutate, say, a Thylacolio, one of the new R creatures. We'd be able to mutate a Thylacolio with some Kentro mutagen and give it an ability to, you know, grow spines and reflect damage back onto its attackers. Now, that's me being extremely hopeful, because in all honesty, I do not think they will be implementing something that complicated. Uh because it's the Arc Devs. I, no offense to them, but you know, they're not exactly known for groundbreaking new stuff. Um, so I'm going to throw it out here and say that it's just going to be able to uh, allow us to mutate our dinos a lot easier. That's, that's what I'm guessing that the new mutagen will be for. Now we also have confirmation of all the new creatures that are coming into Genesis Part 2. So these are pretty much all that we've already known. Uh, brain controlling Noglins, elegant high-tech striders, the cuddly mobile nursery Maywing, and even the laser shooting, bomb blasting, barrel rolling Astrodelphus Starfighter, among other fantastical new creatures and evolved R variants of old favorites. So evolved R variants, I'm hoping they might have a new ability or something like that. Once again, I highly doubt it um, because I'm assuming they'll just have different stats compared to the normal creatures. You know, they, they did the same sort of thing with Genesis Part 1. That was the only difference between the the x creatures and the standard creatures was that they had slightly different stats they didn't have any extra abilities they had a slightly different color scheme but that was pretty much it so i'm hoping that they've improved on this because they have delayed it quite a lot this was supposed to come out last year in september i believe so they've delayed it like a solid what eight months so hopefully they've really really brought their a game for this because i've got high things for it uh we also have some of the information on the items uh in genesis 2 you'll learn how to place remote cameras pull off tricks with a floating skateboard like hover sail Take care of your eggs with the high-tech incubator. Shoot arrows made of pure energy with the tech bow and even engage in a real-time strategy command mode within the new exo mech and far, far more. Now, this last line, engage in real-time strategy mode within the new exo mech. Real-time strategy is pretty much a top-down look where uh, you control armies. So think like Total War and stuff like that. We have done videos on the channel. Um, so that's really interesting that you're going to be able to do that with your dinos. And they did tease a picture which uh, we'll show you guys here. And uh, yeah, so it's pretty interesting that they've included a, a real-time command mode. So it looks like if you don't want to actually get into the fray of battle, you can just send your dinos in and control them control them from a distance through your exomech, which is a cool function. I don't know how effective it'll work off in the game. It'll definitely be buggy and stuff like that. But it sounds like you'd be able to use this for PvP as well from like the safety of a, a certain location and everything. But it does sound pretty cool. So yeah, that's all the new stuff coming to Genesis Part 2. I'm Part of me is excited for the mutagen. Part of me is like this is going to be a massive disappointment and it's not going to be anything that I imagined it would be. But I'm hoping that they prove me wrong and that uh, all the biomes are really cool, unlike Genesis Part 1, which in my opinion, I thought they were really flat. But uh, we'll see how it goes. There's obviously going to be bugs on launch because they've only had eight months to get this out to us. So... We'll see how we go. But yeah, guys, make sure to subscribe to the channel because we'll be covering everything Arc Genesis Part 2 when it drops, all the tames, all the Arc insights, everything you'll need to know about it. And uh, yeah, that's going to wrap the video up for today. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe down below for more. But other than that, I'll catch you in the next one.